Sean, so unlucky. Murray's at the back. What a piece. McManus waits for it. That's the hat trick. Alec McLeish, Gordon, has been hugely impressive this season, both in terms of his man management, his tactical approach. He's hardly put a foot wrong, really, has he? Not yet. I mean, he's changed the team about. I mean, he's lost what people reckon were vital players, two captains in a way, in terms of Amoruso and Barry Ferguson, and neither seems to have been missed so far. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. He's brought in some players, they're fitted in, he's changed the system, as I mentioned, and it just seems to have gone so well from. I mean, this is a big test today. This is the first major test I think Rangers have had, obviously, outside the European games. But it's going to be a, a real test one. But as I said, so far, McLeish has done everything everything correctly. He yeah, has indeed. Those Rangers fans absolutely delighted that their team is unbeaten both domestically and in Europe this season. They are happy with the manager. Here he is with Chick Young. I like it's about 55 hours since you stepped off an aircraft from Greece. Is that going to be a factor? No, I don't think so. This early in the season, yeah, you know, we've, we've said a lot about it, and I think we'll put it to bed now. It was a decent gesture of Martin to say he would have moved it, you know, but we never got that far. Uh, we were told it, it, it couldn't be moved and, and that was that, we accepted it, but hopefully we, we can uh, be more flexible in the future. OK, forget the politics, let's talk football. You've gone for the same side uh, which performed on Wednesday night. Is that to make these guys try and prove a point? <laughs> Don't mention the word point. <laughs> uh, they, 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 they played well, you know, they, they, they've been told that game last 90 minutes, they know that. We've watched uh, a bit of the footage from the, the Panthinaikos game and uh, they realised themselves, they come off the gas a wee bit and Panthinaikos took risks and, and uh, fortune favours the brave, you might say. So, in the end, um, we're, we're still smarting a bit from it. Uh, there was an opportunity lost, but we're, we're playing great stuff. Celtic are playing great stuff. The points are a great game, probably rubbish. <laughs> Three points today won't guarantee a championship, but it would be a huge psychological advantage to you, wouldn't it? Always, always. Uh, you know, Celtic came here at the end of last season and gained a huge psychological boost by coming and winning, uh, despite their very long journey from Portugal. And the championship race was blown wide open. Uh, but we managed to show our mettle and bottle and maintained that right to the very end when when we won the championship. Uh, you're right, it doesn't guarantee anything, but it can be a psychological advantage, but it's, it's too early in the season for anything to be decided. Thanks, Alec. All right, thanks. Alex McLeish, whose man management is exemplary. I thought last year, Gordon, he got much more out of Ronald De Boer and Fernando Rickson to take two. This year, it seems to be short of Arvaladze, who's giving him more than, than he has done up until now. Yeah, definitely. Arvaladze has been a reformed player, no doubt about it. I mean, he's always been a skillful player. I mean, his goal scoring record before he came to Rangers was tremendous. But this season, I think he's taken on the mantle of being the, the, the top striker at the club. It's a goal he scored against Celtic, not one of his better goals, you have to say, but he's capable of scoring. Uh, good quality goals, like this one at Aberdeen, with the, the ability in the box to control the ball. He's good with either foot as well, as we've seen it, uh, as well. And as I said, this season, I always felt he was better last year when Ronald De Boer was playing the team. And Ronald De Boer's been absent, and yet Avalanche has come through, and he's now scoring at the rate for Rangers that he used to score for the other sides, including Ajax when he was there. So he's a key man, obviously, for Rangers, but Alan Thompson, obviously, is very much a, a key man for, for Celtic. Just a quick word on Alan before we bring Kenny in, Gordon. Well, Alan Thompson, you couldn't say any more about his season. He's been tremendous. I think he's been a top player for Celtic for two or three seasons now, to be honest with you, but this season especially. 
I think Alan gives him that show width on the left and also uh, his delivery from set plays uh, is very dangerous and very helpful to Celtic. He's, uh, his dead ball situations, he can, even on the move, he whips in a decent cross. He's not just been an actual left footer helps him tremendously. He's close to an England call up, uh, and if he got that, I'm sure he wouldn't let him down. But he's, he can be proud of the way he's yeah. He won't the take season. the penalty today, although he scored that one there against Hibs. He missed in midweek, obviously, so he's off penalty duty. And uh, I don't know, is that a psychological downer for him, really, to, to be off penalties? To be off? Mm. No, I think it's uh, a boost, maybe a bit yeah. of relief. Do you think, well, I know beforehand that I'm not going to be taking them. Yeah. But he missed a penalty on Tuesday night, but it didn't affect him. He just, I mean, obviously be upset. Mm. And they'd be more than happy when Liam Miller scored the first goal. <laughs> but he got on with his game and, and he, he just chipped in as, as he normally does. Well, every great player looks back on a record that includes a man of the match performance in an old firm game, probably. So who will it be today? As well, we've got some excellent prizes for you. The man of the match is Jersey, a family match day out at a Bank of Scotland Premier League match of your choice or a digital radio, if your choice agrees with Sandy Clarks. Give us a call, 09011-110-861. 09011-110-861 for the man of the match. Well, the Celtic fans come here with uh, great hopes as well, of course. They've absolutely uh, nothing to worry about based on their performances this season. Good record at Ibrox towards the end of last season, of course. But they do have those injuries and suspensions affecting the team a little bit. Here's Martin and Ilbachek. Martin, you've had us guessing about your lineup all this week. Should we guess that you're going to play a three at the back? Well, Chris is going to play at the back, and um, we're going to start off that way uh, with him there. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, we've... Um, we can adapt, we can, we can go 4-4-2, uh, we can go three at the back, we can do all sorts of things anyway, but uh, at the minute I'll, um, uh, Chris is going to play centre half. Was that a, a lot of thinking for you to do, because you had a four here last year and played very well? Well, we can, uh, uh, we can still go that way, and um, the, the good thing about the side is being able to adapt, uh, obviously, um, in, 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 uh, if things were ideal, it'd be better if Chris was playing further up the field, but uh, that, that's not the case so far. What do events of the week, uh, what do they come to bring to this match? The fact that you're in a high played very well on Tuesday, and, and Rangers, of course, from their perspective, it was disappointment not to win the game. Well, uh, I, if you don't mind, I see it from a different perspective. I, I see them uh, leading the group, I see them having four points, I see them playing very well indeed. And yes, of course, they'll be, uh, they'll be disappointed they didn't take all three points. The way the game panned out, I'm sure that uh, before the game started, if you'd said to them that they'd get away there unscathed and got something from the game, yes. And a wee bit like ourselves in, in, in uh, Bayern Munich, at least, at least Rangers got something from the game, which they thoroughly deserved. We got nothing from the game and thought we, we, we uh, probably should have got something. So um, I'm not so sure that, um, I'm not so sure that uh, Rangers will be, uh, will be on a low because of it. Thanks, Martin. All right. Five minutes to kick off. Just one question remains to be answered. Who's going to win it? Kenny? I don't think Celtic can afford to lose it. I mean, I know it's a bit early in the season to be making predictions, but... Uh, You're not going I for don't... a draw, I hope, are you? Why not? Where's the career, so... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think they can afford to lose it. So, but as for Rangers, a point in midweek, wasn't it? Alec wasn't too happy with it, but I think he'd be happy with one today. All right, Gordon? I'll go one step safer than Kenny. I've no idea. You know, I just think we'll get two teams here who are in top form and can rest on individual mistakes or, or even a refereeing decision or whatever. I think it's so close to call. I just think that the, the, the problem Celtic have got today is they've not got the, 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 the back three players they'd really want. That I know these players are fitted in well and played there, but I just think that could be the problem. And, and depending how they play, I think if, if they don't get it together today, I think Rangers will win the game. But that's that's the, the key factor. Right, that's the key area then, and uh, kick off fast approaching. So let's go out there and enjoy all the anticipation of the last few minutes before kick off time with Robin Sandy. Thanks, Dougie. Scottish football can puff out its chest at the moment and take considerable pride in the performances in Europe of Rangers and Celtic. The old firm are helping us clamber back up that ladder of respectability. Both have hopes of reaching the knockout phase of the Champions League as they go head to head for the first time this season. Let's refresh our memories on those two all important lineups. First Rangers, and this is the same team which came so close to beating Panathinaikos in Athens on Wednesday night, already counted out, of course, for this one. De Boer, Rickson, and Thompson all injured. Kloss, Moore, Moles, and Lovacrantz, the only survivors for Rangers at the last Old Firm game. 
as you say, Rob, same team as Wednesday night. They look like starting in the same formation. The system ball can be easily adjusted. Shot to Adelante is comfortable dropping into midfield, which would allow Capuccio and Lovic Mans to play as wingers. But I think Zura and Billy will have the job today of stopping the threat of Alan Thompson down the left hand side. That's Rangers. This is Celtic. Despite the rumours, no Mialbi or Valharan still battling their way back to fitness. Lambert obviously is still ruled out as well. So just one name change from the team which beat Lyon 2 0 at Celtic Park on Tuesday night. That, of course, courtesy of a red card for Boba Baldi last weekend. He's out. 22 year old Liam Miller is in for only his 16th Celtic appearance of any sort. His first taste of the old firm match. Miller in midfield. Didier Agat might crop up at right back. Chris Sutton will crop up in central defence. When you look at this, the Celtic lineup, brother, it looks as if there's a normal 3 5 2 formation. But they'll be ready to change their back four as necessary. And as you see, Didi Agat's the one that'll that'll trigger that play, having to drop back to play right back. But I'm absolutely delighted to see young Liam Miller getting a start today after his impressive midweek substitute appearance. But as always, Henrik Larson and John Hartson will be a massive threat to the Rangers defence. Both teams unbeaten in the league. Two points between them as we speak. Rangers with that slender advantage. And a win here for the home team would stretch that advantage to five points. A Celtic win, and they would swap places. It's sure to be another tight title tussle. Will it go all the way as it did last season? Who will forget that dramatic final day when Celtic were edged out? but only just. Always interesting to scan the faces in the tunnel before they emerge onto the pitch. And sometimes the features give away a fair bit as to how much nerves and tension are operating pre-match. Craig Moore leads our Rangers. Jackie McNamara at the head of the line for Celtic. Stand by for a massive roar. The first all firm match of the season. And seven new faces. Berg, Henning Berg, will start the all firm match for the first time. Unlikely to be phased. He's been there and done it with Blackburn and Manchester United. Brazilian Emerson at the heart of midfield has settled very quickly to the task. Rangers fans thought they would miss Barry Ferguson. Certainly hasn't been missed so far. How will Liam Miller cope in this sort of atmosphere? He's answered every question that's been thrown at him so far. The referee, Mike McCurry, his second old firm match. His first was at Celtic Park in March. He's a member of the Magic Circle. He's also in the Scottish Conjurers Association. Those sort of talents could come in handy. McLeish takes charge for his 10th Old Firm match. He's lost only twice in nine so far. It's number 17 for Martin O'Neill. And Celtic in the previous 16 have scored 32 goals. Timing is everything, and Rangers aren't happy at the recovery time they've been given after sweating it out in Athens on Wednesday. From touchdown to title showdown, little more than 48 hours. Mind you, Celtic were in a similar situation in April after playing their UEFA Cup semi-final against Boa Vista. They came here and won. Sunshine on a Saturday lunchtime at Ibrox for the first Old Firm match of the season. 
who will strike the first psychological blow in the battle of the big two. It matters, match, although don't forget, Celtic had the upper hand in the fixture last season. Rangers won the league. It's always a tight game, Rob, but the one thing that amazes me, and never fails to amaze me, is the atmosphere inside the Old Firm grounds on, on match day. It's absolutely fantastic. The players out there must be relishing the atmosphere, the stage to perform on. You've sampled it, of course. What did it do for you? Oh, it was magnificent, Rob. Kiznishvili gets it back from Avladze. Mikel Arteta, six goals in his first six games this season. Capucho. Michael Moles. Plenty passes. Avladze into Capucho. Michael Moles tries to find room for the shots. Crowded out, beaten by Varga in the end. Good play from Craig Moore. Mateta looking at ways of opening up Celtic. Right on the touchline, Peter Lovenkratz. Emerson. Ball. Their old Rangers have started the game really well. Passing the ball, lots of confidence. Trying to lift the pace of the game as well. Balls against Varga. Good run from Michael Paul. Good pull in as well. And Chris Sutton at full stretch. That's good defending from Sutton. After a terrific ball hooked in by Michael Ball. John Hartson given offside. Just offside, John Hartson. I bet you right now you're seeing the Alan Thompson play the ball a little bit earlier. But that man there, Chris Sutton, what a great interception this is. No. Nope. Yeah, who is it now? And, uh, well, just looking at Celtic shape, and as we thought might happen, really, a guy looks like a right back. He's playing there, and Jackie McNamara's playing left back, Rob. Celtic have obviously prepared that way. I'm just watching the Rangers lining up, line up that's maybe forcing Celtic into that back four. Adelaide's he's playing just off the front. Capuzzo certainly wide in the right, Lovenkrantz wide in the left. Adelaide is the one that's caused them just a little bit of a problem, drop off the front. You never quite know until we get started exactly how the two teams will line up. It depends, of course, on who has the initiative, who's dictating the play. It's Rangers so far with plenty possession. Mikel Arteta scored in his first old for a match. Michael Ball rolls it in for a shot at Avaladze. Well won by Neil Lennon. Now Celtic looking to get on the ball, play some passes. Liam Miller wins a free kick. Clumsy challenge from Peter Lovenkrantz. I think you would describe that as a forward challenge. Lovenkrantz has got absolutely no chance of hitting the ball here. Young Liam Miller does very well, cuts across the front of the player. And pays not to make the challenge, giving away the free kick. Sutton's free kick. Hartson against Moore, Rangers free kick. John Hartson looking for his 50th Celtic goal, looking for his first of the season. A strong play from Chris Sutton against Michael Moles. You need to be strong to shift the Dutchman off the ball. Sutton succeeded. He does very well, Chris Sutton. So versatile, so versatile as we said before, but Michael Moles is... I mean, that was the player back to goal. Rangers have started the game looking to play the ball into Moses' feet, into the lads' feet, to try to draw out the big centre backs. Moore's header, and Emerson, the back heel from Avalanza. And Emerson followed by Miller. No question, it's a free kick. Emerson using his body strength really well. It's a bad in the back as much as anything else here from Young Liam Butter. A little bit enthusiastic to see what is. If you're looking for a time on the ball in the opening minutes of an old firm match, good luck.
Rangers with seven out of seven in the league so far. And they've scored 26 goals in the process. In fact, three goals or more for the Ibrox team in every league game this season. Good play from Petrov, snapping in very quickly in his challenge on Emerson. Petrov already heading for Euro 2004 with uh, Bulgaria having booked their place. That's fantastic play from Michael Moles. Four Celtic players around him, still he came out on top. Remarkable. He's in his really Arteta, Emerson. It's well won by Miller. John Hartson slipped at the crucial moment. A crunching challenge by Alan Thompson. It's another free kick. Nick Masol. Well, look at this. It's great strength apart from anything else. I think Mike McCurry's ready to give a free kick roll, but plays on. Just let it develop to see if Michael Moles holds onto the ball. But what skill, what strength. Teta's pass picks out Logan Kurtz. Back with the Spanish under 21 skipper. And ball. He got losing his footing. Not the first. Michael Ball supporting Peter Logan Kurtz. Prods the pass to Moles. Varga's challenge was enough. As Rangers threatened again. Rangers up are passing the ball really well, lots of confidence, great play down the left-hand side from Ball and Lovenkrantz, and Michael Moles, what's his turn again? Fabulous feet, just a lot of and just lost the ball at the end. A couple of Celtic players have slipped, Thompson and the Gats, but uh, Michael Moles certainly got plenty of grip. Avalanza to Katusko. Good backing up of McNamara there by Thompson. John Hartson tries to keep it, and fails against Hedingberg. And into a gap. And Miller. Celtic's first real chance to get into the final third. Could Moore strong enough? Celtic haven't passed the ball as well as Rangers in the early part of the game, Rob. Maybe the, 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 the fact that the majority of the crowd obviously is in Rangers' favour. The fans getting right behind their team. And we've got lots to be encouraged about the way they're starting the match. Celtic like haven't passed the ball because they haven't really had the ball. It's another free kick on uh, Michael Moles. Chris Sun, just a, that's just a little con card again. Michael Moles has caused them problems. He's just saying, you're not going to get away with that the whole game. Alec McLeish making his first venture out to the touchline, getting as close as he could. Robin Kratz forced in fields. Linking with Arvaladze, that's great skill. Pass deflected off Lennon. Varga has it. And now he got. Three old firm debutants for Celtic, Hedman, Varga and Miller, that's offside. Four new boys for Rangers in terms of this fixture, Berg, Kiznashvili, Emerson and Capuccio. Now, what was Alec McLeish ranting and raving about? In fact, back out he comes again. Let's hear from Chick. He's insistent, Rob, that uh, Rangers take these three quick kicks quickly. He wants the uh, pressure put on Celtic immediately. Keep the ball moving. Again, he's having a go at the moment. It's uh, Loving Kratz. He's going to call Loving Kratz a call a, a cross actually. Have a word with him. It's about speeding up the play. There have been quick passes from Rangers and he wants to keep that going. That's the message at the moment, just being passed there to be a Loving Kratz. You can see that. Now that McLeish retreating and he just wants this more pace injected into Rangers' play. Peter Loving Kratz well with an earshot for Alec McLeish. A stumble from a gap. Sutton clears. Watched all the way by Craig Moore. In goes Henrik Larsson. John Hartson waiting. Thompson as well. It's Alan Thompson! Saved by Stefan Klaas. Thompson could have scored the old from opening goal. It's a magnificent save from Stefan Klaas, but I tell you what, Alan McLeish will not be happy with his captain, Craig Moore. 
I think we were taking liberties against Larson, and that doesn't often pay off. It's amazing, Rob Rangers have played all the football so far in the game, and that's the best opportunity in the, the match. Almost the classic sucker punch. And Alan Thompson will feel he should have done a lot better when that ball was cut back to him by Larson. It was a very strong opportunity for Thompson to score his sixth goal of the season. Stefan Kloss was in the way. It's great play here from Henry Larson. Fuhr dwelling on the ball, Larson picked up. I thought he was going to have a go at goal, but he sees Thompson supporting him, gets there 14, 15 yards out, gets the shot on target. But Stefan Kloss does everything right, gets across the block it. And Martin O'Neill was poised, he was ready to go. Seventy thirty possession in Rangers' favour, having watched the opening 11 and a half minutes, that figure not too surprising. No, as we said before, Rangers have played really well. Lots of confidence, lots of pace in the game. And the, the, the front two are causing lots of problems. Moles right up front, taking the ball in really well. And Arvalanti just dropping off that little bit. Varga, not too sure whether to come with him or pass him on to the midfield player. Jackie McNamara, the Celtic captain. Over the top for Henrik Larsson. And there, blocked the cross. On Thompson's delivery, Craig Moore got there as Liam Miller moved in menacingly. Petrov looking for a free kick, he'll have to look again. Good challenge by Arteta, Petrov still down. Poor pass from Lovenkrantz, drove it straight at Neil Lennon. And Alan Thompson knocks the ball out of play, so Celtic can get some attention for the ground of Petrov. He's calm and uh, just on his cheekbone with his elbow there. I don't, I don't think it was deliberate, I think it was his momentum trying to win the ball. And this looks a shoulder challenge. He certainly caught uh, Stanley Petrov that time. Mikel Arteta certainly has added to the physical side of his play this season. He needed to. He needs that uh, grit and determination in the central midfield position to go with his undoubted skills and his passing ability. And he has been a key player for Rangers so far this season. But uh, Petrov is not a big fan of his at the moment, I don't think. No, after I think that, I think he's going for the ball, Rob. But uh, Petrov doesn't see him coming, that's the problem. That's why he's caught there. But just as you say about Mikel Arteta, everyone realises the talent he has as a footballer. But it's when you go to the ball, you have to work hard as well. And he's learned that part of his game. Well, we've uh, put some more dramatic McLeish's mouth. What's Martin O'Neill been up to? He's used this uh, injury time just have a, a word or two with Liam Miller. Maybe it's just talking about his early involvement in the game. A big occasion for young Miller. His old film debut, first uh, quarter an hour or so, played 13 minutes. He's just a word with him, telling him to calm down a little bit, get himself involved, presumably, and stamp his own undoubted talent in this match. Certainly Liam Miller's fifth start of the season in the midfield, which also includes Stylian Petrov, or will do in a moment when he gets back on. He's still looking a bit groggy, having been caught by the elbow of Arteta. He's only scored once this season, Stylian Petrov, and by his standards, that's a poor return. Craig Moore won the header. Miller to Petrov. The Rangers fans unsympathetic. <laughs> Would you expect anything different? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, just looking, I'm just wondering, uh, Chick was saying it there about Martin O'Neill talking to his midfield players. The one thing Celtic have to do when they get the ball now in the middle of the park, they should have three against two, the way the Rangers system set up. But we really haven't seen Lennon, Petrov, or young Liam Muller take control of that area. I can't throw it straight to Michael Ball, but John Hartson did well to nip in front of the. English international defender. Alan Thompson, always a key player in this match. Peter Lovenkrantz misjudged the cross, it fell for Hartson, but Emerson cleared. It's uh, an intriguing head-to-head, -head, this one, between Moles and Sutton, and you wonder how far away is a yellow card. I think it's healthy, though, Rob. Michael Moles is... Doing the, the, the striker job really well there, getting to the ball first, not allowing the defender to get round them to clear the danger. 
and again he's forced something into giving away the free kick. But you're right what you say, Mike McCurry can't want that going forever. You expect goals in this match with 63 already scored by these two between them. 13 matches for Celtic, 11 for Rangers. Both unbeaten in domestic football and both doing their reputations no harm at all in the Champions League. Katusho, Kiznishvili, Emerson. The disguised reverse pass, but Jackie McNamara saw it coming. Thompson quickly in. Alan Thompson with the, the best chance so far to open the scoring. That's Stan Varga. And a Celtic free kick is given against Capuccio. Don't think he agrees. No, no, Mr. McCurry, you got it wrong. <laughs> or what's that effect? Here's the man of the match telephone number for you again, 090-11-110-861. Man of the match top, back to Scotland family match day. Digital radio, there's the prizes. Hartson's flick. Petrov, good strike. We've got a lot behind this. It's a decent shot, Rob. Again, we see Celtic haven't had too much of the ball, but whenever they go forward, they look dangerous. And Petrov getting two or three yards of space in that midfield area. Just can't get it down, can't keep it on target. But there's no question Celtic, well, they haven't played too well so far. They are a threat in that last third of the field. Liam Miller trying to get the ball down. Good pressure from Arteta. Now Moles. It's wrestled back from him by Petrov. Miller slipped. Loving Krantz, beaten by Agat. That's good defending from Didi Agat. In the unaccustomed position of right fullback. Michael Ball can give this some distance. Arvaladze there, Petrov won the header. Off Neil Lennon. Miller stops it going behind. Kept in by Arvaladze, but kept in for Larson. That's great work from Mikel Arteta. Terrific anticipation and reading of the game, and strong enough to win it back from Larson. Kisnes really to Moles. Emerson! Deflected for a corner. That's a magnificent play from Rangers. From Marteta winning the ball to Emerson. Great skill, great passing. What is layoff from Michael Moles? I don't think it's on target, but Chris Sun doesn't know that. Scored his first Rangers goal in Greece in midweek. And that was threatening. Teta's corner, not the best, but he gets a second chance. Better this time for Berg. Lennon's header, and Magnus Hedman grabs it under the crossbar, under a fair bit of pressure from Capuccio. The first ball wasn't too good, but this is a better cross from Arteta, right into the danger area, allowing the big guys to attack the ball. I think if that goes in, referee Mike McCurry may have awarded a free kick. Berg. Back in his defensive role, heads it clear. Kisnishvili. Exactly the same Rangers team as started against Panathinaikos. And so close they were to getting a famous victory in Greece. A one-all draw was far from failure. And Rangers in a strong position, four points from two games. At the start of their Champions League campaign. Celtic having beaten Lyon on Tuesday night as well. Mikel Arteta heavily involved in the opening salvos. 
Patrick Moore, the Rangers captain. Michael Moles had to go some to get there. Time for Varga. Alan Thompson put under pressure by Kisnes Philly and by Avalanta. Lennon to Larson. That's good defending from Zura Kisnes Philly. Successes for Rangers all around the pitch in these opening stages. Did right well by winning the 50-50s. Celtic can't keep the ball. They can't get a combination of passes to take the pressure off the, the defenders. A darting run from Peter Lovinkrantz, luring Liam Miller into the challenge. It's a free kick, and it's a word in the ear of the 22-year-old Irish midfielder. It's good play from Lovinkrantz. Deciding this time, I'm going to go in the way, away from a gap. He's certainly got the pace to take young Liam Miller. He just catches him at the end there. Craig Moore and Henning Berg both up alongside Capuccio and Moles and Lovenkratz. And a shot at Abeladze in there as well. Everyone back for Celtic. Arteta's delivery, Berg tried to put his head to it. Now it's Capuccio. Emerson. Arteta. Mikel Arteta settled for the corner. Off Miller. Has to be played off from Arteta and Everson before that. Arteta knew exactly what he was looking for there. You couldn't get the ball in, so I'll just run a corner kick. Avalanza making the run at the near post. It's hit to the back post. Well. Magnus Hedman came for it and didn't really get near it, but uh, let's go down to the touchline and check. Yeah, I think Celtic have a major problem with Alan Thompson. He just signalled across to the bench that he's done. I think he's going to be changed. There's a little powwow in the, in the Celtic dugout at the moment, what to do, but there's certainly a problem with Alan Thompson. We'll just see what evolves over the next few seconds, Rob. So, Michael Gray is getting ready for action. And what a big moment it's going to be for the on-loan Sunderland left-back, who, of course, can play just about any position down the left side. I think you're playing Robbie, he'll, he'll come on and play left-back, and Jackie McNamara will push out in the middle of the park. More on Alan Thompson, Chick? Yeah, it's a calf problem. They've got the, the substitution you talked about will happen. It's great coming on for his debut, and I hope for him debut anyway. So Celtic will be forced to reshuffle midway through the first half of the first old firm match of the season. That's good play from Agat. And Celtic will want to make the change now. And it's a big blow to lose Alan Thompson, so influential in the history of this old firm fixture, the recent history, a goal scorer, a goal maker. And always with a big say, and how it goes against Rangers. But he's off, and Michael Gray, having featured only very briefly for Celtic in his loan spell from Sunderland, played the final 15 minutes against Motherwell. And he's into the hustle and bustle of the old firm match. Celtic reshuffling, but not, <laughs> not the way we expected at well, the moment. I wonder if there's a, another shuffle to come here. I don't know if uh, Mark is maybe going to try and go back to a three to buy Jack and McNamara playing in beside Sutton and, and Varga. Michael Gray set on the left back, left wing back here. Michael Ball's cross, Neil Lennon is there. And Chris Sutton to unload it. Michael Gray in at left back, Jackie McNamara right back, and Varga and Sutton between them. That means Didi Agat can get further forward and immediately threatening against Michael Ball. Good cut back 
and Craig Moore was well placed. Arteta away from McNamara, and the ball given away. McNamara gets a second chance against Avalanza. No free kick. McNamara thought he was tripped by a ball. Mike McCarty waved away the claim. I'm not too sure about this one, Rob. He said against Beyond Dog. No, referee Mike McCurry's right. Yeah, good decision. Michael Ball didn't move his feet. Another quiet Saturday lunchtime in Govan. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? What a comeback Michael Ball has made to the Rangers top team, having missed so much football with serious injury. He looks to be getting back to his very best and might well be knocking on the door of an England recall before too much longer. Jackie McNamara's cross, awkward bouncing ball. Craig Moore was there. Now John Hartson. Try knocking him off the ball. Good work from Lovenkrantz. Avalanza. Moles. With his shadow, not far away. That's good Chris play. Sorry, well, that's great play from Michael Moles. Didn't have anywhere to play the ball at all. No, it like, just held on to it long enough to make sure Rangers get possession. We talk about uh, Michael Gray being brought into this fixture. How will he cope? Well, 400 odd games for Sunderland, an English international. He's got bags of experience. Hartson's flick. Berg is there. Kisnesvili, Larson ropes him, now Petrov, Miller. Gray can't get beyond Kisnesvili. It's Lemon. And Henning Berg back to Stefan Kloss. Varga shouted to Lennon to leave it for him. Celtic trying to get back from an offside position. Well, we haven't seen too much of Henrik Larsson, although he did create that great chance early on for Alan Thompson. And when he goes quiet, that's when Rangers should worry. You're absolutely right, Rob. We've seen it earlier on. Craig Moore thought he'd lots of time and space. Larsson proved different. It's Berg. Goes Petrov. Marga clears, but goes straight to Emerson. Avalanza tried to throw the pass back through for Emerson. Good stop from Varga. Magnus Hedman on the ball. Playing his eighth match on the trot, keeping Rob Douglas away from the goalkeeper's jersey. Larson gets a foul, given against the Kiesnisch Billy challenge. It's always going to be difficult for Kiesnisch Billy to get at the ball there without getting at Larson first. I thought, I thought it was a tangle of two players, Rob didn't see too much in it at all. Petrov's free kick. Craig Moore hitting shoulders above everyone else. Michael Gray. Petrov again. Henning Berg heading away the Gray cross. That's a pure pass from Capuccio. Michael Moles is in a great position, but a swapping one from Capuccio. I haven't seen too much of him. He's the one Rangers player that maybe hasn't contributed when he had the ball. Celtic beginning to grow. Having had to cope with a lot of early Rangers possession and passes. Avalanza with Capuccio and Moles and Lovenkrantz up ahead. Teta to Emerson. The on-form Avalanza again. 
Katusha with Gray right in behind him. The former Toto player, Katusha. Zurakiznishvili into Michael Moles. That's good defending from Stan Varga. That's good play from Greg, set the back, kept his eye on the ball, watched the ball well and watched the player. Celtic beginning to exert some pressure and forcing Rangers into some mistakes. Let's hear from uh, Dr Young on the touchline. Y yeah, well, I've never, not a great prognosis. The first, uh, you probably noticed the, the ice is under his uh, hamstring. <laughs> It wouldn't be a calf injury he's got then, but just taking a last up on that one, it'll be fine. Remind me not to take medical advice from you. Alan <laughs> Thompson already out of this old firm match. Celtic already missing the influence of players like Miabi and Vilhadon and Lambert and, of course, Bobo Baldi. I think one of the biggest losses from the Bobo Baldi angle, Rob, is set pieces for Celtic. He was such a threat in the opposition box. We've seen the last one get into the box there, Craig Moore won it easily. Wouldn't it be the same if Bobo Baldo was there? No, Ritson, the Blur or Thompson for Rangers. But they've been going very well in the last few weeks without that trio. The new players have settled in so quickly. The mission of Berg. There were two stands at Stanets in Greece in midweek. Michael Gray with a head start on shot at Avaladze. Free kick given against Kisnishvili. He's another who must be teetering towards a yellow card. Well, he's going to be careful. It's a silly challenge. Celtic really aren't going anywhere. Not too much in the challenge, to be fair, because there's really with his hands up, the Rangers fans in behind him, certainly not agreeing with the referee. Nearly 33 minutes gone of the old firm match at Ibrox. Nil-nil, but never dull. Avalanza, good chest control. And a useful pass for Lovin but that's great defending from Didier Gatt. Saw the problem and very quickly cut it out. Avalanza gets one over on McNamara. Katusha, Arteta, and Berg. Michael Ball, he's a loving pass. Ball continues the run forward. So two ball in. An easy header away for Gray, but Rangers back onto it with Arteta. And Capuccio! Did well to stretch out and reach that, but his cutback went beyond Lovenkrantz. He sneaked in at the back, Capuccio. Celtic almost caught out. Capuccio made a very, very good run there, Rob. You'll see he has a great ball from Arteta. Capuccio staying on side, he can't quite reach it to get on target. So the next best thing is to knock it across the box and hope someone picks up a second ball. There was also their real quality on the delivery from Arteta, which picked out Capuccio. Sutton, man of many positions. Henry Larson. Knocks it down for Liam Miller, it's deflected off Michael Ball. Corner kick. Again, it's a threat from Celtic going forward. Larson and Hatson showing great body strength inside the Rangers box. And Henrik Larson, great composer to lay it back the way, just a deflection on the way through from the shot. Celtic's first corner, ten minutes from half-time, in from Petrov. And Rangers have the free kick. Chris Sutton's challenging Craig Muir. It's only Chris Sutton's third league game of the season, having had to serve a five-match ban. Varga won the header. 
play from Henning Berg, shutting down the opportunities for Henrik Larsson. I feel now, Robert, that as if Celtic have actually weathered the storm. Rangers still not, not playing with the same pace, the same movement as they showed earlier in the match. I think the changes actually might be helping a little bit. Griezmann finding on the left hand side and it's like a gap push on that a little bit to be more of a threat going forward. Michael Gray's cross and the shout from Stefan Kors comes and takes it. So this weekend, the first old firm match of the season. Next weekend, Scotland against Lithuania. A vital 90 minutes as Scotland hoped to clinch a place in the playoffs. All the preview on Saturday lunchtime, the highlights on the Saturday night. Full focus at the moment. And Rangers against Celtic. Mikel Arteta has a free kick. Driven against Miller's challenge. Great play again from Mikel Arteta. So strong in the ball now. Two young midfielders, Arteta 21, Miller 22. And at the moment, Arteta one boot down. Ball to Emerson. Avaladze. Threads the pass through to Ball. That's a good challenge from McNamara to stop Emerson. Ranger still with 10 on the pitch. Arteta gets his boots tied up. It's a free kick in Rangers' favour for a handball against Henrik Larsson. I think the Swede was looking for a free kick in his favour for a push in the back. Arteta back on. Rolls the pass inside. McNamara for Logan Prince to chase. Free kick given against the Rangers winger. Peter Lovey Crans trying to take Jackie McNamara for pace, but Jackie read the situation really well. Got a 10 yard start to make sure there wasn't a problem. But that would be a worry for Mark McNeil. The guy's pace can certainly handle Loving Crans. Jackie McNamara has been playing so well, hasn't he, for Celtic and Scotland. So he's handled just about everything recently. Yeah. Well, the, he's got loads of experience and it showed in that challenge. Looking to impose himself in that crucial central midfield area. Gets it back from Capuccio. Good play from Stanislav Varga. It's all about seeing the danger, reading the game, then cutting it out. Michael Gray, the first half substitutes. Gets away from Kisnes, really. But he doesn't get past Semerson. Emerson wanted too much time on the ball, and it's not going to happen here. Celtic want to take the free kick quickly, but they'll have to try again. Petrov was fouled. Because of his belly, it was Rob that uh, took him out of the game there. A little bit late, to say the least. Petrov into the penalty box. Craig Moore takes charge. Kusha works it clear, but only as far as McNamara. That's well won by Peter Lovingkrantz. Sometimes timing of tackles is not a strong point. That one was. But they can certainly get there very quick. That was an interesting race, Rob. Did he get against Lovingkrantz? Over 100 yards. Varga, Moore. Remember to let us know what you think about the game, bbc.co.uk slash Sports Scotland. You can email us via that website or you can text us at 736 600 600. What do you think about the Old Firm match so far?
five minutes or so away from half time. McNamara lofts it in and uh, Henningberg misjudged it and in the end to readjust to knock the ball behind. It's not the worst ball in the world, it's a sensible one from Jackie McNamara. I can't play the ball anywhere else. And just the presence of Henrik Larson causing problems inside the Rangers box here. Well, it would have been Alan Thompson to take the corner, he's off. Still in Petrov, delivery. John Hartson flung himself at it, failed to make contact. Chris Sutton plays it back in. Still in Petrov at the back post. Oh, slipped at the crucial moment. And Michael Ball was able to play it clear. That was a real chance for Celtic. And Petrov kept his feet. Varga, Petrov on side. Hart turns short. And Stefan Klaus makes the save. How often do we say that? That's an unbelievable save. I thought it was in the back of the net. Celtic, it's a Rangers free kick against Didi Yagat. The face of innocence, with the decision already taken, as we reflect on a chance at the other end, as Kloss saved from Hartson. It's a great ball from Petrov, and John Hartson does everything right. It's low, it's hard, it's right in the corner, it's through a, a group of players, but Kloss again somehow got there. Tremendous save. It could have been John Hartson's first goal of the season. It could have been number 50 for him for Celtic. But that wasn't allowing for the acrobatics of Stefan Kloss. Great goalkeeper. Arteta's free kick. No marking on Peter Lovenkrantz. And it could have been the opening goal at the other end. Rangers are looking for a corner kick. There was a deflection of some kind. I'm not sure who it comes off, but it's a good free kick from Arteta. Picks out Lovenkrantz, keeps it down well. And there's no question it should have been a corner kick. And what about the lack of marking there on Peter Lovenkrantz? He had time to pick his spot. We've just seen that at both ends of twice Celtic and round the back in the left back position. Petrov have been two opportunities. Hartson, fouled by Emerson. Thought he was fouled a moment ago by Henning Berg. That one wasn't given, but the one. Uh, Emerson was. And that would be a telling blow for either side to score at this stage of the first half. Into the box from Michael Gray. John Hartson to Henrik Larsson. Klaus punches clear. Emerson not one to panic. And gets it back from Kisnish, really. Great run from Peter Lovenkrantz, so we we'll run it at the end, which allowed Chris Sutton to step in and clear. After a very menacing moment there, starring Peter Lovenkrantz. Great play from the day and down the left-hand side. You think the touch of Robbie so quick, the least touch on him is going to go down, it could be a penalty kick, just locked, knocked it too far in front at the last minute. Ninety seconds of the first half left. Henningberg on the ball. McNamara cuts out the Berg pass. Onto it comes Arteta. Lovenkrantz right on the byline. That's terrific play from Petrov, but it's Arteta again. Crowded out by four Celtic players. Lennon back to Hedman. That's a poor clearance from Magnus Hedman. It flew straight at Arbelanza. This match being played at a fair old pace. It's the first yellow card and it's for Zura Kiznisvili. And he can't complain. No, he can. It's persistent fouling. The incredible action at both ends of the field. This is it, the yellow card. He doesn't really get the ball, takes the player out of the game. 
But as for persistent failing, it's not his first. Well, took until the 45th minute for uh, Mike McCurry to produce a yellow card. He's held off as long as he could. To be fair, uh, Rob, the game's been playing a great spirit. Very competitive, but no nastiness at all. Stromberger fancies himself here for a, a crack at goal. Still has it, Varga. Finally robbed by Moles. Half time at Ibrox, such as the din around the ground, you struggle to hear the whistle. But we've had the first 46 minutes of the first Old Firm match of the season, and Rangers indebted, uh, as they have been on so many occasions before, to Stefan Kloss. Top class goalkeeping from him keeps it at nil nil. Celtic having held out and soaked up a fair bit of early pressure from Rangers, came back to create chances. Larson set up Alan Thompson before the midfielder had to be taken off, injured. And this, the John Hartson effort, which produced a superb save from Stefan Kloss. It's nil-nil at half-time. Wow, what a strange 45 minutes in some ways. Neither team really getting in top for any lengthy spell. Not that many clear-cut chances. Defences on top, Gordon. I think they are. I think that uh, Rangers started the game well, got a lot of possession. I think it was about a, a 1 minute 25 seconds, somebody forced Celtic to get their first touch. But I think Celtic have also come onto their game, and I think as the game developed, Celtic were actually the better side in the first half. Now, yeah, do you go along with that, Kenny? Well, I think Rangers have had a lot of possession, but I think Celtic is the only team that's uh, warmed the goalkeeper's hands up. Of did two great saves there. Uh, Rangers passed it and moved it quite well, up to a point. Moles looked threatening for the first 20 25 minutes. But we've not seen Michael Moles for the last 20 minutes of the games. Mm. Celtic have taken on when, when Thompson came off, who it looked threatening as well. He came off, and I think it helped Agat because I think Agat's a better player when he knows he's got somebody behind him. Jack has moved wings, he's gone behind him, so he might charge forward a little bit. But I think Celtic have let them have it, closed them up pretty well when they've had to close them up and try to catch them on the hop. And, as I say, it's been pretty nip and tuck, but I think the I think Celtic maybe just a shade there. Yeah, they edged edge the first half. The, the area that Celtic fans were maybe concerned about, God, in the defensive area, whether it was back three or a, or a four as they ended up playing, it's not really been a problem at all, actually. They defended no, very solidly. What I said before the game was that would be a crucial part because, it, you know, normally all last season you think about the Mialbi, Baldi, Bohan, three of those players missing today and they've had to shape their back four or back three in different ways with different personnel as well and they've even had to change during that first half too when I mean, they had to bring on Michael Gray and obviously that affected them but it hasn't really uh, been a big uh, problem to them they've defended really well in numbers and, the, and the, the midfield have come back done a great job just in front of them and Rangers have failed to penetrate really that's the thing that loads of possession but it was all in front of the Celtic defence never in behind and, and consequently most of the, the good chances that were created the, the efforts on goal came from Celtic getting forward uh, well, Magnus Hedman, in fact, has hardly had to touch the ball so well have Celtic defended in front of him. Uh, the only shots and goal really coming from Celtic and Stefan Kloss having to pull up two very good saves. This is uh, early on and Henrik Larsson after a bad mistake here by Craig Moore, Kenny. Yeah, he tries to pull it down and Har Henrik's on top of him right away. It's a good ball back. Kloss has done really well there getting across, across his goals. but. Um, Thompson might, he might have squeezed it in a bit nearer to the post. Good ball back, good power on the shot, but I mean, it just has to put it a little bit further. Kloss has covered yeah. that post, and then he's got himself yeah. across goal. So but he's not really covered the other post. No, but when the ball comes to Alan Thompson in that situation, Kenny, he probably sees an open goal. It's just that Kloss is moving yeah, so quickly across goal. This is a Petrov it's shot, pretty which uh, never really threatened. It's uh, no. sailing over the bar. Uh, you have William Miller on his old firm debut. Any, any thoughts? I think he settled in quite comfortably in there. Anything that's knocked up to Celtic's front two, especially if Hartson's involved, has caused them one or two problems. And Celtic, they're quite good at picking up the scraps. That's an instance there. Liam has a shot and it's deflected off, I think it was Henningberg. 
This is a decent advantage. Stan Petrovic yeah. slipped in just the same position a minute before in a good position, but he that's laid that well for Hartson. That's into the category of being a great save. That, yeah. That's tremendous goalkeeping. Stephen Kloss does it so often for Rangers. I mean, I know Rangers defend pretty well, but every time Stephen Kloss is called upon to do something, he makes those kind of saves. He, he's been a tremendous servant for Rangers, a great signing for them. And once again there, he pulled out a great save from Hartson. Yeah, he's the main reason why his goal is at half-time. You've said, in fact, many times, Kenny, you feel Chris Sutton's best positions at, at centre-half, and uh, he's done a terrific job today, hasn't he? Yeah, both him and Varga have played there as if the two of them have been a partnership for years. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just the understanding to have a play in the position. He, he's a wee bit rash sometimes, he comes in and gives away needless free kicks. But he stands up to moles here, gets back in the box, and, and he's there to block the crosses. He reads it very well. Um, and he's not averse to just knocking it forward. I mean, it was from one of his parents, then which chance came. The interesting thing, he'd only had one year as a striker when Kenny bought him for Blackburn. He'd only ever played one year and he, and he fitted in so well as a striker on that Blackburn side. But he can play both positions and, uh, you know, he said no problem at all. But this is an example of how, watch how he hears Celtic, you know, when Sutton gets across again and it just blocks off him. The Rangers just trying to get the opening. That was one of the decent efforts Rangers had in that first half. Really good, good, really good, Emerson, actually, really good yeah, football. That's, yeah. that's the best part of the game for, for Rangers so far, that, I think. Um, but even when you see that, Celtic have still got plenty of bodies behind the behind the ball. And that's the way they play. And that's if, if you if they take the ball off you, they'll catch you. And they're no, they've not got quick players, but their passing's quick. Mm. And they get it up to Hearts and he holds it up and allows people to get there and join up. But Celtic can be pleased. I think they've, they've looked reasonably comfortable. But they have closed down very well, Gordon. Now they're all working very, very hard. When Rangers have had possession in midfield, they're pressing up on them. They're giving them yeah. very little room to play. I think this is a great example of Celtic's organisation. Rangers win possession here. Watch as they take the ball forward. Lo loads of passing. It's it's not a quick build up, but it is it's, it's good passing into feet. But look how Celtic are getting players back behind the ball. They drift back there, and all of a sudden they've created two banks of players there, the midfield just in front, there's a the defence coming out, look how all the time they're just closing, they're never under any pressure, this has happened so often to Rangers, the passes, most of the passes end up going back the way, they're just shut down the left side so Rangers can't get down there, and they're pressing the ball on that left side, and once again you see no space for Rangers to, to make the opening, and at the very end of the day, uh, they've blocked the cross here, Varga got across, that, that's happened right throughout the first half, Rangers build up's been a bit elaborate, but they've had no penetration really. As soon as there was a change of possession there, the Celtic back four just drop back. Mm. It's intelligent football, actually, isn't it? But you don't mind them having it in front of you. Mm. I mean, but they're not they're no just leaving the player and dropping back. Mm. They're staying quite close to him, but they're dropping back and dropping back. Capuccio gets it, he's not about to pass it. Yeah. He's got to run with it, so he hadn't run away. It gets Celtic more time to get back. When you look back on it, as we said, uh, Magnus Edmund has perhaps only had one real save to make or one real take. That was from a, a corner kick. There was the shot, of course, from Emerson, blocked by Sutton. But then towards the end of the half, Peter Lovenkans gets a shot in here, which certainly should have been a corner. It was maybe unlucky that the deflection didn't work for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was, it was close. Unlucky. Mm -hmm. it, it just took a little deflection. He didn't get the corner, as we know, and uh, I think Mike McCurry missed that. Mike McCurry's had a good game. Mm -hmm. I would say that for him as well. A lot of people had doubts about him handling this style of match, but so far, so good. I know we're only halfway there and we can't uh, be too uh, uh, complimentary at this stage to the referee, but I think he deserves a compliment. I think he's done well. Yeah. I think the two European games in midweek, if our referees look at that, then they'll learn a great lesson because they showed common sense. And Mick McCurry showed common sense in the first half. He said the word with a couple of players, but he's not booked him. And then he obviously has to book Kishi and Willie in the last minute of the first half. But he showed a lot of common sense. And that's good, that's good for everybody. The players will you'll gain the players' respect for that, and the players will know exactly where they stand. But just, I hope we just didn't start thinking about the assessor up in the stand, giving them a little bit of a verbal or <laughs> a written, or written warning. He's doing a great job so far, and just leave it, continue the way he's going, and the referees will gain a lot more respect for him. I, I think of the two managers, I think, I think Alec McLeish will be more disappointed in the first half. I don't think Rangers have, have played the way they've played so far this season, albeit Celtic are a good side at the moment, but so are Rangers, and I think Alec McLeish will want more from his midfield players, and especially his wide players. Capuccio's got to get more in the game for them. Mm. He's, he's done very little, and if they get into the game wide, then maybe Moles and Loving Cats can get in the game. Uh, well, 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 we'll move on, because we, we'll, we'll talk about what might develop in the second half uh, very shortly. It's goalless, of course, at Ibrox uh, at half-time. But uh, although there's been no goal so far, plenty of goals during September in the Bank of Scotland Premier League, and coming up, the Goal of the Month competition, six absolute crackers for you to choose from.
the pick of September's goals and some real crackers to choose from. Kenny, in fact, will choose the best of those. If your choice agrees with him, you could win the competition. It was Tom Cowan for Dundee against Aberdeen. Sean Maloney's free kick for Celtic against Motherwell. Show to Arvaladze's goal at Tynecastle, which broke the deadlock. Lee Mako's individual effort for Livingston against Killy. Francisco Kino also for Livingston at Aberdeen. And finally, Paolo Vanoli's terrific strike last week for Rangers against Dundee. Tough to pick the best of those. But if you fancy a shot at it, 09011-110862, 09011-110862, you have until 6 o'clock tomorrow to cast your vote. And as I say, Kenny will pick uh, the best of the six. If your choice agrees with us, you could win hospitality for four people to see your favourite Bank of Scotland Premier League team. Talking of the Premier League, five more matches to come this afternoon, of course, all with three o'clock kickoffs. There they are, the pick of them, probably the meeting at Tynecastle between two sides who on their day are as uh, good as just about anyone in the country. Hearts against Dundee. That's a belter. We'll look forward to seeing the highlights of that and indeed all of this afternoon's matches on Sports Scene Results. Goals flying in all around the country. All sorts of things going on at Ibrox. Oh, what a finish by Tom McManus! It's football all the way on Sports Scene Results. Sports Scene Results at half past four. One other lunchtime kickoff today in the Barclay Card Premiership. That's uh, the big match between Liverpool and Arsenal. It's 1 1 at half time. Liverpool going ahead through Harry Kuehl, much to Kenny's excitement. But a Sammy Hoopia own goal, in fact, were, uh, was Arsenal's equaliser. 1 1 at Anfield in the match in the Premiership. Another competition for you, if uh, you've never been to the Bernabeu in Madrid, here's a chance for you to go for the match between Real Madrid and Atletico Bilbao on the Sunday, the 2nd of November. Here's what you have to do. Identify the scorers, coming up now. Pretty straightforward, really. Who are these three Real Madrid players scoring for their countries? The prize, a trip for two to the Barnabo to see Real against Athletic Bilbao on Sunday, November the 2nd. 09011-1144-00. 09011-1144-00. And you've got a couple of weeks to make that call. So it's 0-0 here at Ibrox in the first Old Firm confrontation of the season. Keep the emails and texts coming in. Quite a number of you, in fact, making the same point from the Rangers' point of view, that Barry Ferguson is not really being missed. Everyone's so far pretty impressed by Mikel Arteta. Uh, let's see what happens in the second half. Celtic perhaps just the edge of the first 45 minutes, but it's goalless. Let's go back to Robin Sandy. Well, Celtic were forced into a first-half change when Alan Thompson went off. And Rangers start the second half, minus skipper Craig Moore. He's off, and Morris Ross is his replacement. Not, uh, not a new boy in terms of the old firm fixture, he's sampled it before. So, Ross for Moore at half-time for Rangers. Keith Billy, the only yellow card so far. Celtic as they finished the first half, which was minus Thompson. Michael Gray was his replacement. Celtic were always going to miss the influence of Alan Thompson when he went off. He's such a big player. But in some ways, Sandy, since he went off, Celtic have actually looked even stronger. Well, I think the, the substitutions actually helped Celtic in a, a silly way. The Jackie McNamara is very comfortable playing the right-hand side, and it's given Diddy a a lot more freedom to go forward. And a guy's quite happy working back as well to, to make sure he coats with the pace of 11 crans. Celtic haven't lost the first Old Firm match of the season since Martin O'Neill took charge. 6-2, 2-0, and then last season, 3-all. All square so far, as Hartson links with Larson. John Hartson scores! 18 seconds of the second half gone, his 50th Celtic goal. And it couldn't have come in more dramatic circumstances. It's a good build-up from Celtic, straight down the middle, but I'm not too sure if John Harrison needs this one. It takes a slight defle deflection the way over, but he won't be too concerned. 
He comes off Kisnes I think it is. That's it. Stephen Claus going the wrong way. Does he help Kisnes Vili? Claus is caught going the wrong way. Can't do anything about that. And Hartson delighted the ball's in the back of the net. Claus foiled Thompson and Hartson himself in the first half, but he could do nothing about the deflection on the chip from Hartson. Off Kisnes Vili. Claus was going the other way. Couldn't readjust in time, and it clipped the underside of the crossbar on its way in. We're barely underway in the second half, and Celtic are ahead. John Hartson's first goal of the season. An injury interrupted. Restart, of course, for Hartson after back surgery in the summer. But his first goal of the season is number 50 for Celtic. 18 seconds was all it took in the second half for John Hartson to break the deadlock. A Rangers defence minus Craig Moore. Check what's the story. Yeah, I've just had a quick one with Craig Moore, and like Alan Thompson, it's a hamstring problem. It's just going to take his place, actually, in the Rangers bench. He's clearly disappointed about the outcome of events, but a hamstring problem for him as well. And I tell you, Robert, Rangers have paid the price for that already, and they built up to that Hartson goal. Hartson. Managed to beat Kisnes Vail in the air. Larson picked up the second ball. Hartson got round the boot, Kisnes Vail and stuck it in the net. And John Hartson wasn't far away there. From a long ball into the box from Jackie McNamara. And, well, I wonder was it something Martin O'Neill put in the tee at half-time or something he said, but uh, Celtic have come out very determined. They had the best chances of the first half. Hartson's effort saved by course. Alan Thompson might have scored as well before Celtic did break the deadlock, link up between Larson and Hartson and the deflected chip from the Welsh international striker ending up behind Stefan Kloss. It was the fact that he managed to beat Kisnes Bill in there without any real problem, Rob. Can't help but feel that Craig Moore is in there challenging Hartson. There's more of a challenge on it, the ball doesn't fall as Ken like Larson. The Rangers reshuffle at the back. Kisnes Vili and Berg in central defence, Maurice Ross at right back. And they had little opportunity to think about anything there as Celtic struck. That's a free kick, Petrov won Capuccio, no complaints. Celtic won here in the final old firm match of last season, they're ahead in the first run of this campaign. Goal scorer Hartson holds the ball for Liam Miller. Rangers look for a response. Levin Kratz on his way, but again, Celtic getting lots of bodies behind the ball. It worked for them well in the first half. Goal kick. Last touch off Larson. That's good play from Celtic Rob. Loving fans driving forward with the ball a few minutes ago. But so many Celtic players round about him and eventually the ball caught on that man Larson. Always wanting to make runs, make angles to receive the pass up front, take the pressure off his defence. That's it. He's missed really the two Georgians combined. Emerson. Good challenge from Petrov to win it for Celtic. Larson, Hartson, and went Ross. Celtic still in possession. Liam Miller to John Hartson, offside. Good play from the Rangers defenders. Just holding the line. Hartson, no choice but to go forward, but two yards offside. Check with information on the touchline. Yeah, tactical switch coming up from Alec McCloche as well. Eagle Oshtenstad's going to be introduced in up front to give them a bit more bite. Not quite sure he's coming off at the moment, Rob, but you'll be the first to know. Morris Ross on the overlap, and that's great play from Stalin Petrov. Never hinted at giving that up. Great play from Morris Ross as well, driving forward from the right back position, but Petrov does his job well, working back from the middle, blocked the cross. Capuccio is going to be the player to come off when Egil Oshton comes on. 
Mikel Arteta's corner. Here's a chance well, for Michael Moles on the overhead kick. It was well blocked. Henrik Larsson hits the deck. The Rangers fans just a few feet away from him, not too impressed. This is a half chance for Michael Moles back to goal. Does the scissors kick really well? But a great block again. Didi Aga, I think it is, it manages to get there. Yep, makes the block. Austin Stutt getting some parting words of advice from his manager. And like Michael Gray, who's barely featured for Celtic, Eddie lost in start. There's only 15 minutes of first team football so far with Rangers. That was in another BBC Live match at Tyne Castle. Came on late in that match, as uh, Teppy Moylan and remember as well. The former Blackburn and Southampton striker is on for Rangers. It's a free kick for Rangers, pull from him, Arson. But interesting, I think Shock and will play wing the right hand side draw. And Austin stand up front the same moles. First touch for Austin start. Stan Varga is sticking close. Not too surprised that Capuccio coming, coming off from. Really hasn't made any contribution at all in the game. Loving Crouch run halted by McNamara. Jackie McNamara putting in another impressive shift for Celtic here. Kiznizhvili's pass. Austin Stutt, the target man. Keeps it just about. Emerson's pass came off Miller. Now a gut. Gives it away. Rangers still trying to recover from that early second half strike from John Hartson. Kiznishvili, Michael Ball. Chris Sutton, dominating in central defence. Mikel Arteta has a big part to play for Rangers. If they're to get themselves back level. It's a test of character for all the Rangers players now. I've got to stand up and count to get back to passing the ball. Berg's pass finds Austin start onside. It was a poor first touch. Chris Sutton let it go, but it's a corner kick. I tell you, Rob, that's a chance. Austin stands well onside. Chris Sutton thinks it's a goal kick rather than a corner kick. But he is onside. If you look along the line, can't really see it there, but in the right back position. He's okay, but that's a terrible first touch. Avalanza is away from Miller. That's a good effort on target. Neil Lennon was in front of Magnus Hedman to make the block. Sutton against Berg. Two former Blackburn players. Sutton furious at the award of the corner kick. But Celtic can be relieved about that because it was a big chance for Austin Stat. Wasn't quite ready for it. That's Hartson. Larson on his own. Kiznisvili prods it to Avaladze. Emerson was standing waiting, Miller wasn't. Petrov obstructed by Kiznisvili, he's already been booked, and he's trading a dangerous path. He's got to be really careful. There's no doubt he takes Petrov out of the game here. I think the thing that maybe saves him, Rob, is the ball's going four or five yards beyond Petrov. May not have picked the ball up. It's still a free kick. If he didn't have a yellow card against his name, I wonder if he would have got one there. That was a blatant obstruction. Still just the one booking in the match. Vargas free kick. Larson and Ball wrestling. Levin Crunch back to clear. He's such a difficult opponent. He uses his body so well. He holds his ground, uses his body strength to turn players, turn defenders. Does not allow them a clear header. McNamara and Miller. 
Long ball from Michael Ball. And Chris Sutton was all over Michael Bowles. Not for the first time a free kick by Sutton on Bowles. I think they were just checking addresses for Christmas cards there. <laughs> It's come to a frenzy. Michael Gray's header dropped for Arvladze. Austin Stat, the Norwegian international striker. Rangers throw. Emerson wants to be more influential in this match. He started it so well, but he has faded out. And he's been guilty in the second half of... Uh, Sleeping on the ball and being caught in possession. I think he tried to play a little one two there with Austin Stad. The first pass wasn't the best. Arteta against Miller. Asking a lot of Peter Lovenkrantz, but he's quick enough. Good defending, though, from McNamara. Yet again, very composed under pressure. The Scottish international played that off Lovenkrantz and won the goal kick. He certainly didn't panic, Rob. Used all his experience there. Knew he was getting to the ball first. And thought, I'll just hit it off the player. And I'm sure we'll win a goal kick. He's played really well today again. John Hudson's last Celtic goal was here against Rangers. That was in April in the 2-1 win, and he has the only goal here so far. With the aid of a deflection of Zura Kiznishvili, lots of credit, though, to John Hartson for getting in when it hurts, and that number of 50 of his goals for Celtic. That's the difference in scoreline so far. Rangers 100% league record under threat. Lovenkrantz can't find the ball into the box. And it was an easy clearance for Chris Sutton. Sutton and Varga have done well, yep. looking very steady, very solid. Celtic are, uh, are pretty happy now to sit with five at the back, three in the middle of the park and two up front. And they're now saying to the Rangers, right, you try and beat us, try and get a, find a way through us. And just like that one there, the three solid in the middle of the park protecting the back three. At the moment, Rangers lacking spark, lacking ingenuity in the midfield area to find ways of hurting Celtic. And so far, Magnus Hedman hasn't had a serious save to make. He's not had a save to make at all, Rob. The Lovin Kranz shot and past the post, but uh, Alan McLeish, I'm sure he's saying to his players now, especially in the midfield too, Emerson Arteta, they started the game so well there. They were in control, they bossed the midfield area, but now they're really not making telling passes, not too involved in the game. And they have to start playing again if Rangers are going to get back in the game. Peter Lovenkrantz at his best can certainly make a difference for Rangers. Michael Ball kept out by Liam Miller. And the free kick goes Celtic's way. Unlikely to be phased by the old firm pressure, Liam Miller looks to have a great attitude to the game, terrific ability as well. And he this season is really making his mark. And what a week he's had with the first goal against Lyon on Tuesday in the Champions League. And now his old firm baptism. Business really keeps very cool, despite the presence of Henrik Larsson. Alongside him, the vast experience of hitting Berg. The former Middlesbrough midfielder, Emerson. Mikel Arteta. Lovenkrantz turning in field. A combination of a gap and Miller was enough. Teta's shot blocked by McNamara. Rangers huffing and puffing at the moment, but still looking to find a way in behind the Celtic defence. Boris Ross, the half-time interval change for Craig Moore. 
So no more for Rangers, no Thompson for Celtic. Two big old firm players off with hamstring injuries. It's Kiznishvili into Moles, Arveladze snatched at the shot. Seven goals in seven games for Shota Arveladze, he's hot, but he didn't catch this. It's a half chance Rob, Michael Moles is playing it back to him. Catches it but doesn't catch it too well at all. He's a win for the keeper. I think Rangers Rob are trying to get loving fans into the game as much as possible. But as soon as he gets the ball, Didier gets close to him right away, and Jackie McNamara fills the space in behind to stop him going wide. But he causes problems, he gets a chance to use his pace. And Celtic more than happy at the moment, not just with the scoreline, but with the way this match is developing as well. They have the lead, and uh, they have the control of the game at the moment, and Rangers can't hurt them. Well, uh, Celtic are looking strong and confident, and they're certainly defending very well. Rangers have already introduced, of course, Ross and Austin start. One more change available to be made, and uh, the only outfield players left on the bench now, Christian Nerlinger and Stephen Hughes. Ross to Moles. Neil Lennon making his presence felt around the midfield. With some biting challenges, good positional sense as well. And here he is, Neil Lennon. With the help of a gap breaking up another Rangers attack. John Hartson launches it for the offside Larson. Neil this Lennon is crucial, isn't he, in these sort of situations? He is, Rob, but Didier Gat does really well. He gets the, he makes the challenge that you're right about Lennon. He just sits in front of the back players and picks up all the loose balls like that one there. Austin starts. Control not good enough, and it was played off him by Chris Sutton. It's a Celtic throw. But I just wonder, is Celtic playing a bit too deep here, Sandy? Well, uh, they're very comfortable playing just in front of the 18-yard box. So they're quite happy to let Rangers have the ball. They've got five spread across the 18-yard box, and that's hard to break down. What it does is it denies space in behind for Moles, Austin Stad, Robin Crash to run into. So I think that's maybe deliberate from Martin O'Neill. And at this moment in time, it's working because, as we said before, the goalkeeper headman really has had nothing to do. Larson won it, but couldn't keep it. Long ball from Sutton. Larson gets in front of Berg. Still has it, Henry Larson. And that wasn't too far away from Liam Miller, who darted into the penalty box. Great play again from Henry Larson. Doesn't get up. Henry Berg's trying to play football, he's trying to build an attack, but really takes a chance too much there. Larson on to that shot. But again, good awareness from Stefan Cross. Craig Moore took liberties in the first half against Larson. Henning Berg there, and uh, others have tried it, and others have regretted it. And Larson's cross there wasn't too far away from Liam Miller. And it was though that pair, of course, who combined to open the scoring against Lyon on Tuesday. 13 fouls apiece, but the vital statistic, Rangers nil, Celtic 1. Hartson the target, free kick against him. A leading back. Into Kisnesvili. I don't think John Hartson agrees with this, but it's just for leaning back there. He's pushing into Kisnesvili. That's great play from the striker's point of view, and I sometimes think uh, defenders get too much protection. I think in, in that occasion, I think it may, just may have been a free kick. You got away with a lot of that, I seem to recall. And those black and white pictures that I've seen of you playing. Those were the days. <laughs> The first old firm match of the season, live from BBC Scotland. Rangers, one goal down at home to Celtic. Both making a big impression on the European stage at the moment. And it will be a, an almighty tussle between these two as to who wins the title, just as it was last season. Free kick against Michael Gray. Knocked over Morris Ross, the two substitutes. This is a silly one for uh, Michael Gray to give away. He's no chance of getting the ball there. Morris Ross does well to protect the ball. Good first touch. 
You know, if you can't win the ball, just hold them up by time until you can get a chance to make a tackle. He's watched the old front match on television before Michael Gray. He's been here as well. This is his first experience of being out there on the pitch. The veteran defender, Henning Berg, with the free kick. Emerson waiting. Michael Moles as well. He was about to pull the trigger. And Didier Gatt, not for the first time in this match, makes a very important interception. He had to get there, Gatt. Otherwise, Michael Moles was, was ready to get the shot off. There was wrestling going on there, involving Varga and Austin Starts. The decision goes Celtic's way, which is the Norwegian striker shaking his head. I think it was two big guys going for the ball again. Didn't see too much in it. We'll see here. They're both having a go at each other, aren't they? Celtic in control of the ball anyway. Both players with English Premiership experience, ex of Sunderland and a brief spell with West Brom, Stan Varga. And, uh, and uh, Austin Stan, of course, who was with uh, Blackburn recently in Southampton, a bit further back. Hutchins flick. Liam Miller on the move. Kept out by Emerson. Good strong play from the Brazilian. But that's good defending again from McNamara against Moles. Made sure that was his, the Celtic captain. And his sort of determination is an example to everyone round about. But Celtic today have shown a lot of spirit, a lot of good teamwork, high work rate. And it has them in front at the moment. Avalanza and Ross in combination. Emerson. Well, he's losing the ball under his feet. And Chris Sutton looked too bothered about where it went as long as it went. And that's all the way through to Kloss. He made those two important first half saves to keep the scoreline blank. And it didn't take long in the second half for the deadlock to be broken. If you've just joined us, the second half was only 18 seconds old when John Hartson made it 1-0 Celtic. John Hartson is such, uh, such an experienced player now, Rob. Hartson and Lashen up front. With Celtic going on the ball with the Rangers backs, players have it. They're the first line of defence, they make life difficult for them to ball from the back. So I think we've shot Maloney on the bench and may decide to freshen things up in the next five or ten minutes. Martin O'Neill applauding the effort, the commitment of his players. They've done just about everything right so far. I don't think Martin O'Neill want to change too much at the moment, Rob. The only thing that will create a, a, a reason for a change is going to be tired legs. Whereas Alan McLeish, I'm sure he's thinking, how can I change it? How can I move things about a little bit? And McLeish, of course, with only one more substitution to make. Check what's he saying at the moment? Yeah, Alan McLeish just said a word about Avalade. I'm not quite sure what's going to unfold here, Rob, but he's certainly changed the role of Avalade. He had a word with him. He's now having a little uh, chat with Andy Watson there about things. I'm definitely thinking about a tactical switch, and it will involve Avaladze, and I know Sandy will spot it within seconds. There you are. That's the pressure on. <laughs> Can, I tell, the clock I tell is you, ticking. I tell you, Rob, what, I, if I was big guy, like, I'd have a look at changing loving cans. Maybe play him through the middle, try and use his pace through there, because Agat and, and McNamara are certainly snubbing him out at that side of the pitch. And the two strikers at the moment, Austin Stad and, and Michael Moles, just isn't working. And again, Rangers not finding the quality of delivery into the penalty box that's going to cause any problems for Celtic. Stan Varga doing some sterling defensive work again there. He's been impressive. When you look at the fact that uh, Varga and Sutton well, haven't played together in that position before, apart from a little spell at Easter Road last week, they look as if they've played for a long time together. John Hartson maybe typifies what Celtic are doing here at the moment. He's back there in 
a deep midfield position to work the ball away. And work is what Celtic do so well. Four letter word that features so much when you speak about the way they play. Emerson looking for a free kick and gets it. That's good play from the Brazilian. More joy than loving cries down that left hand side, drifting over there. Well, not big on the guy, it's a sandwich really between the two Celtic players. Played for the free kick and certainly won it. Yeah, Jackie McNamara held him back. And now a set piece chance for Rangers to get themselves back on level terms. Austin Stacked and Moles just outside the six yard box. Lovenkrantz and Berg not far behind. Avaladze and Ross. Emerson just outside the area. Mikel Arteta plays it in. Good header away from Stanislav Varga. Kiznesvili to Ball. That's for Austin Stacked. That's Varga. Larson tried to cushion a header for Liam Miller. Free kick against him. Well, climbing in the back of Kiznish Billy, he was well up, Miller. <laughs> it was almost on his shoulders, that's why he was so high up. 49,825 inside Ibrox. As Mikel Arteta threatens. Good work again from Didier Gart. So much effort from him and so many good challenges. I haven't seen too much of him going forward today, Rob, but the defensive part of his game's been excellent. to Henningberg, well off target, not a prolific scorer of goals, Berg. No, I think uh, if he's lucky here, Robbie may get a deflection, maybe the ball will fall to one of his teammates inside the box, but only really one thing on his mind, not a lot of options for him, must be frustrated with his forwards. Only 73 minutes gone, and Ibrox, Petrov's header, Larson. Leaves it back to Hartson. New Lennon takes it away from him. Now Petrov turning away from Ball. Good burst of pace from Petrov. It's spilled by Gross. Saved by Berg. As Larson tried to turn the ball into the Rangers' net. Great defender from Henningberg there. That could be a crucial moment in the match. When we reflect on it afterwards, as Celtic were nearly two ahead, that they're not is down to Henningberg. Boris Ross. Emerson. Michael Gray cut that out pretty comfortably. Larson against Berg and Ross, and Berg wins the challenge. Norwegian to Norwegian. Austin Stack against Sutton. Chris Sutton takes charge. Michael Gray forces it away. That's good referee there from Mike McCurry. Let them go on with it, trying to win the ball. Rangers free kick given against Petrov. The foul was on Morris Ross. We'll have a look in a moment uh, at how Celtic were nearly two ahead, but that's after this opportunity for Rangers to get some decent ammunition into the area. Michael Ball's delivery, hitting Berg there with a the header, but it was never going to hit the target. But he certainly was effective at the other end, Sandy. It's great play from Stalin Petro. Gets beyond Michael Ball. Plays a good ball at the box. Stefan Close has to come for it, but what about this from Henningberg? Larson surely would have stuck that away. Be quick in his feet. Does really well. Petro does exceptionally well to start with. Tries to find Larson. But Berg's going the opposite way, but reacts really well. Good change of feet to get there first. He may be approaching retirement, Henningberg, but he's not there yet, and there's still plenty of good football in him. And that was top-class defending. The 
Rangers supporters turning up the volume, looking to aid their team's search for an equaliser. Arteta's pass to Boris Ross. Deflection. And Michael Gray stops it going behind for the corner. Good play from Michael Gray. Rangers trying to lift the pace of the game now, trying to put pressure on the Celtic defenders. Again, it's great, adapting well. And only his second appearance for Celtic. His first was the closing stages at home to Motherwell. The Morris Ross throw. Austin snapped the target. Varga won it. Free kick against Berg. He's unlucky, Henry Berg, there, but Henry Larson does this so well, just backs in enough to force the defender to push him out the road. Henning Berg is finding out what playing against Henrik Larsson is all about. It's not easy. And at times it could be a nightmare. Larsson, who created the uh, two goals against Lyon in midweek and scored his eighth of the season last weekend at Easter Road, the winner. That's Berg's header, beating Hartson. Ross plays it long. Sutton has it. That's terrific defending. Under pressure from both Moles and Austin Stat. Larson looking for Petrov. In goes Kiznishvili. It breaks to Henrik Larson. Petrov has the chance to make it too. Still has it, still in Petrov. As Klaus forced him out wide. The yeah, Agat shot blocked. Good goalkeeping from Stefan Klaus. As Stylian Petrov looked to have a, a gilt-edged opportunity there to put this match beyond Rangers. I tell you, Rob, it's good goalkeeping, but I tell you, Martin O'Neill will be raging with Stylian Petrov. He really should finish this from Celtic's point of view. Just hit it now. You've got a chance. Takes too long, plus stays on his feet, and eventually does really well. Yes, yeah, good goalkeeping from Klaus, but uh, it was really asking to be hit early by Petrov. And Celtic have... Passed up another chance to get two goals in front. It's going to happen, Rob, because Rangers are obviously chasing the game now. They've got to push players forward. And Celtic are so good in the break behind Henry Larson up there. Boris Ross tries to get beyond Michael Gray. The cross is on the wrong side of the net. Not the best across it from uh, Morris Ross. Tries to get his foot around the ball to keep it in play, but just too much on it. Not troubling the goalkeeper. This is the first of five Bank of Scotland Premier League games being played today. And the first of six, in fact. And you can see the rest, the goals for all the other games on sports team results from around about half past four. That's every Saturday, your first chance to see the Premier League action. So take one up in the 12.30 kickoff, the first old firm match. Off to Leonard. Now McNamara. And a gap. Liam Miller was setting himself for the shot. As Arvaladza nipped the ball away from him. Powerful header from Chris Sutton. Hartson looked as if he was being pulled by Michael Ball. Good plays from John Hartson. We're happy to, to make sure he gets the shot. Good header from Chris Sutton again. Look at the distance on it. I don't think there's too much in that there. Again, two guys going for the ball. I don't think there's any way that's an infringement. John Hartson not claiming for anything. And if he did manage to pull him out of the way, well done, Michael Ball. <laughs> Hartson's goal still makes the difference. It's 1-0 Celtic into the last 10 minutes. Rangers are going to swap Robin Kranz and Avalanti. Robin Kranz now waiting the right-hand side. Michael Moles trying to play that through to Austin Stapt. Celtic have defended very well. If they can do so for another 10 minutes or so, the match is theirs. Emerson 
Eddie lost and stuck. Emerson tries again, this time Maul's the target. And Chris Sutton came barging through there to make sure that he could force that clear. Emerson again, Sutton again. Brave header from Chris Sutton. And Sutton and Varga are proving irresistible here for Celtic at the back. What a performance has been from Sutton. He's playing exceptionally well, Rob. He wants to hear, he's so brave. No thoughts about ducking out of this one. The boot's up there from Austin Stad, but he's more than happy to put his head down there where it hurts. And make sure he gets a clearance in. But apart from that, yeah, Chris has actually organised the back foot today so well. He's dragging Varga around with him, making sure he's close to him, helping each other. He can play so well up front, he can play off the front. And as you can see from this, he is very comfortable playing in defence as well. An all-round top-class footballer, Chris Sutton. And he's playing a crucial part here for Celtic. And if Celtic can win at Ibrox, they will go top of the league. Swapping places with their biggest rivals. And even at this early stage of the season, it's a big psychological blow. If you can win an opposition territory... It's not a long way to go, Rob, as you know. But uh, you're absolutely right, if uh, they win us today, it's a big advantage to them. Five blue jerseys, looking to find some daylight. Mikel Arteta fails to get it beyond Neil Lennon. It needs a better quality of ball in than that, if Rangers are to salvage something from this. I think Robert Taker's trying to put pace in the ball, but got too many big, big guys to hit. And when it's floated in like that, it's food and drink for Sutton and Varga. Business Villiers pass. Michael Gray watched it, hoping it might go behind. It has gone behind now, it's a corner kick. Mikel Arteta to deliver. First there, guess who, Chris Sutton. Zurich is Nishvili. Wins a free kick. Good play there from Zurich, Kishin Nishvili. Easy for you to say. Another opportunity gone for Rangers. It's just the final ball in the second half from Rangers roll. No real penetration, but I think you give Celtic credit for that as well. As we said before, five across the back, leaving no gaps whatsoever to get in behind them. It's been so hard to play in front of them. Wasn't taken from the right position there, the throw it. Not sure what a couple of yards means, <laughs> but uh, Mike McCurry wants his way. I thought that was the same place. <laughs> Poor pass from Zurich Isnishvili. Takes the pressure off Celtic. Larson's so good at keeping possession, even when he's on his own. What he does, Rob, he takes the pressure off his defenders. His players know as soon as you get the ball to last, he's going to hold on to it, he's going to win you a free kick, a throw in, just as he did there. And that lets him go up the field and reorganise. Such a strong outlet for Celtic when they're in this winning position. And all the time the clock is ticking. And it's ticking for Rangers. 85 minutes played. Here's Chick. Yeah, there's no doubt, Martin O'Neill now would be happy to sit in for this. He's telling uh, Gat just to sit back a little bit. I think Celtic are just going to weather the storm for the last five minutes. They'll be very happy, obviously, if Rangers get score and they're just going to keep what they've got. Emerson to Moles. Miller had it and lost it. Avalanche. Teta to Berg. 
In for Ostenstadt, won the header. But it wasn't a great problem for Chris Sutton. Kiznishvili. Varga won the header, but an offside flag was up. That takes the heat off. Rangers now are all but going route one. Anytime they get the ball, it's a high ball through the middle. They really don't have to play. Rustin stands a decent size, but I think Varga and Sutton can handle him okay. And it doesn't look as if that policy is going to pay off for Rangers, no, does it? it doesn't. There's not a lot of options there, Rob. They have to try and get the ball in the box. And what they're hoping for is to maybe pick up a second ball, get a deflection. Three and a half minutes of regulation time remaining. Still, John Hartson's goal separates these two. Hartson forcing his way through. It's Michael Ball. Avalanza beaten by the combination of Larson and Agat. Ranger has given the throw. Berg to Moles. Sutton's cleaving header. Petrov gets the better of Arteta. Rangers in a hurry. Seven wins out of seven in the league up till this. Rangers now trying to salvage a point. It's disappointing for Morris Ross. Tries again, but that's out of play. And you can hear the sounds of frustration from the Rangers supporters. They are frustrated, Rob, and uh, that was a chance for Morris Ross. He had no excuse for not getting that ball in the box. Austin Stad actually took up a very good position in front of Varga. Morris Ross couldn't find him, couldn't beat the first man. Berg's header. Chris Sutton plays it away. There's John Hartson. Good play from Petrov. It came off Lovencrutz. Kept in by Berg. Short tugging going on. And the decision goes against Eggy Lost in Stacks. One of the match, Andy. Well, I tell you, Rob, there's been a few uh, contenders today. Rangers started really well, Arteta, Emerson, but the second half, Celtic really have been immense. They've defended so well. Up front, Henry Lass has been different class, but that man there, Chris Sutton, he is a striker, but he's went back and played centre back today as if he's played there his whole career. And he's been exceptional. He's my back, he's got the man in the back. Inside the 90th minute at Ibrox. Two to be added. So just adding them up. Yep, that's three minutes to go. <laughs> well, the arithmetic never fails me. Heading Berg into the box again for Michael Ball. That came off the head of Varga and onto the top of the net. Magnus Hedman had come off his line and Stan Varga wasn't sure where that was heading. Hedman doesn't have a clue where this is going wrong, but now that is La Varga. They certainly got the break that time. It's a high ball in the middle. Rangers challenging again, just knocking it in there, hope they pick up something. Loving Kranz with the first header and Varga just over the bar. Nearly 90 minutes played. Arteta plays it in. Chris Sutton heads it clear. And Chris Sutton doesn't want any mistakes to be made in these closing stages with Celtic so close to a big win. Michael Ball's long throw, out comes Magnus Hedman, that's an important take in among the blue shirts. It's a great catch, but I tell you what, Mark Lanell won't be too happy with them. I can't believe the goalkeeper kicked at his early. And Mark Lanell puts a, a finger to his temple, and he's absolutely raging with Magnus Hedman for handing possession back to Rangers there, and for launching that so quickly. It wasn't clever. 
Boris Ross with a chance to put it into the penalty box. Can't get it there. Stylian Petrov blocked it. Kiznisvili shot deflected. And Chris Sutton calmly plays the ball out to Henrik Larsson, who will now take the ball for a run and invite Rangers to come and get it. One minute added, one to go. What can Rangers do about this? They're running out of time. They are. Uh, I tell you what, Rob has been a first-class performance shelf at the second half. The goal has given them an enormous lift. The time of the goal starting the second half, and Rangers since then have been chasing the game, foaming, working, trying to get down the flanks through in the middle. The Celtic have defended exceptionally well. And it's gone Celtic's way, the free kick decision, which causes fury among the home support. I said both players went down very, very easily there. And it's interesting to make a decision, went Celtic's way. It's interesting to look at the faces of the two managers at this stage. Martin O'Neill cannot wait for that final whistle to blow. He knows how important this result might prove to be. Alec McLeish in the background there, arms folded. A look of resignation on his face. The Celtic fans ready for a party. It's almost over at Ibrox. Already, Mike McCarthy's had a look at his watch. Celtic have won the first all firm match of the season by a goal to nil. Celtic go top of the league. John Hartson's goal proves decisive. His first of the season, his 50th for Celtic, and it came with just 18 seconds into the second half and you can see in the reaction of the manager and the players how much this means it's been a tough week for both Celtic and Rangers in the Champions League it's Celtic who come out on top Chris Sutton producing a standout performance in central defence alongside Stan Vorga Celtic minus their regular back three of last season, Mialbi, Baldi and Valharan. Did it show? Certainly not. Celtic were defensively sound and they got the goal that mattered through John Hartson at Ibrox in the first Old Firm match of the season. Rangers nil, Celtic won. Well, that was a really assured and intelligent Celtic performance and very few would argue that they are well worthy of the three points. Their third consecutive league win over Rangers. They go one point clear at the top of the Bank of Scotland Premier League. And of course, it's Rangers' first defeat of the season in any competition. But those Celtic fans will celebrate not just the victory, but the fact that they won it very well indeed. Here's the man of the match, Chris Sutton with Chick. Chris, just getting a kiss there from uh, John Robertson. I'm sure that was absolutely delightful for you. Uh, have you ever thought about a whole career at centre half? What might have happened to you? No, not really. Uh, I didn't know until half past 11 I was playing there. But, uh, no, I mean, the main thing where well, we were disciplined and uh, we knew it was going to be a hard game. But I thought, as I said, discipline was good throughout. And, uh, you know, we had chances as well. And uh, Stefan Kloss played exceptionally well for them. But, you know, that's, uh, that's good for Big John. It's a tremendous goal from him. And uh, good that he's off the mark. You and Stan Barg, you looked as if you'd played together all your life there in that, in that role together. Um, well, I don't know about that. No, I... The main thing was, uh, you know, we're talking to each other and helping each other through, well, him helping me through more than me helping him through. Um, but, no, it's a, it a good win, but there's still a long way to go. Yeah, it's a huge, meaningful victory, nevertheless, for Celtic today, Chris, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's important in terms of, uh, you know, we, we go top, but there's still a hell of a long way to go. Rangers are a good side, as they've, they've proved in Europe and uh, domestically. Never bothered you being moved about the, positionally in the team? No, I mean, it happens uh, sort of most weeks, so, uh, you, you know, I've got used to it, but no, it's not a problem. We've got, you know, lots of good players and uh, lots of competition for, for places. But, um, no, the main thing was we won today. You presume we move over and let Bobo back in next week again? <laughs> yeah, I think so. No, Bobo's a massive loss for us. Uh, and I think everybody was a bit concerned about, you know, coming into this game without him. But, uh, you know, fortunately, we won the game. Well done, Chris. Bank of Scotland, man, the match champion. Great performance. Well done. Yes, terrific performance by Chris Sutton, great performance all over by Celtic. Let's take a look at that league table then. This is the picture which will uh, bring a smile to Celtic faces tonight. 
They are back on top of the table, a point clear of Rangers after the 1-0 win this afternoon. And Gordon Smith, I don't think anyone could argue that Celtic deserved the victory. No, I thought so. I thought that uh, even in the first half, they'd serve notice that they were, were getting control of the game. I think Rangers started very well passing it, but they never had the penetration that they would look for in a team. And Alec McLeish will be disappointed with that. Man and Neil they had to put together a, a defence today that we wouldn't normally play, but nevertheless, they did really well. And I felt that even uh, from half time onwards, uh, you know, the, the goal obviously in the second half very early. And that set the ceiling how Celtic are going to play because they're quite comfortable to play when they've got a lead just to sit back and it worked very well from Rangers still couldn't get through even hitting the long balls it never created any chances really. Yeah. It was probably the poorest performance of the season for Rangers so far, Kenny. Uh, is that down to the fact that Celtic were so good or was there some sort of European hangover? Were they a bit heavy legged, a bit jaded? Well, I think um, Celtic are probably the best team they've come up against. Uh, defensively, they're very well organised. If they and they did very well, they channeled everything through into the two. They been, Rangers never get around the side of them once. Um, so if Evans getting knocked into Sutton and Varga, they're knocking it forward. I mean, Sutton had a header for the halfway line up into the box in the second half there. So they're, they're playing to their strengths. They're very, very difficult to break down. I'm sure there's a little bit of a legacy about the travel back for Greece. Um, but then that legacy would still have been there if they'd have won the game. But I think you've got to pay. We've got to pay Celtic credit. I think the big problem for Rangers is they've not got the strength and depth that Celtic have. I mean, there's their three central defenders, their three recognised central defenders from last year. They're not on the team. I mean, if I like it to face up to that, he's not got the strength and depth to cope with. Sure. And he's just facing a little bit of backlash for a little bit of financial crisis at Ibrox at the moment. Let's take a look back at uh, the highlights of uh, this first Old Firm game of the season. Then uh, only one real near thing, I suppose, in the first half. This was it. It was ominously perhaps for Rangers, John Hartson, and that was a good save by Stefan Kloss. But this is from kick-off in the second half. Chris Sutton scored after 18 seconds in the Old Firm match at Ibrox last year, that was in the first half, and this goal came precisely 18 seconds into the second. I wonder, was this got anything to do with the fact that Rangers had just made the substitution of Craig Moore? I don't, I don't think you can uh, ignore the fact that it was significant, but they get a, a degree of fortune from the goals, you can see. I mean, the Rangers stood off a bit, but you can see the Kishnish really goes in for the challenge, and he deflects it towards goal, and uh, it's just off his hand, I think, even. It comes it's, off his hand, yeah. Yeah, it comes off his hand. Stephen Kloss caught out, he's anticipating the cross, which John Hartson was actually trying to do. He was trying to find uh, Henry Larson with that cross. Selene Petrov gets past ball easily and he's at full stretch here. Lost, but Henning Bear steps in to save him. I think any time Celtic got the pitch, they looked as if they, they could create some form of chance. I think Lost had three or four good saves today, which is another reflection of how Celtic deserve yeah, to win the match. Celtic created the better openings in the game, no doubt about that. I thought Selene Petrov should have shot there rather than take a touch. If he had shot there, I think he would have scored and 2 0 would have been comfortable and Celtic could have cruised to the end as it was. You know, they were always under a bit of pressure because we were letting Rangers play, but look at this, he should hit this now, but I just think that he's made a mistake there. I think his first touch, I think it was OK stop, and I think his first touch put it underneath his feet. But um, Celtic were there, they couldn't break them down, and if you don't break them down, you don't score, you know, don't get shots in target, you're not going to win too many games. Well, it's a, it's a compliment to the Celtic defence, and maybe an indictment of Rangers too. I don't think Magnus Hedman had a significant save to make in the entire match. I don't think he did. He, mm. His only contribution is actually upset his teammates when he... <laughs> He took, that, uh, he took the ball in his hands and then kicked it straight out of play and gave Rangers possession again. Sure. Neil Lennon uh, had a go at him as well, as, apart from Martin Neal, so they're probably saying something to him in the dressing room. But Ma Magnus Hedman didn't have enough to do from Rangers' point of view. And you've got to look at the situation. There wasn't enough guile in the Rangers team today, you know, not enough creativity. And they just didn't get anything really that, that was causing Celtic any problems. Celtic, as I say, even makeshift defence. I agree with Sandy that uh, Sutton was definitely man in the match, but he was well served along with, with Varga. Uh, Jackie McNamara. I got. I thought I got was outstanding today. Really hard, defensive you know, role. And, mm. and in the midfield, we toiled hard as well. And, and Celtic, you know, they, they played. They, they, they sat a little bit deeper, but they were all the time they were creating uh, situations themselves when they were breaking focus. Rangers were pushing, trying to get something from the game. It just didn't happen. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing that Celtic away from home, whether it's a European tie or coming to Ibrox, they always seem to turn in a really solid, confident performance, don't they? They're a very good side away from Celtic, but. As well, well as at home, obviously. Last year in the UEFA Cup, right? I mean, I know they lost to Stuttgart, mm. but they were through. Yes. They were 3-1 up and they went 2-0 up. And mm. I think maybe they took the foot off the pedal a little bit. Mm. But they went to Blackburn and won, went to Liverpool and won, went to Boa Vista and won. Mm. There's no fear coming here for them because they're really well organised. I think 
Martin and Celtic got their game going better today than what than what Alec did. And I think I, I think Martin really won a little bit of the tactical battle. And I think to get through Celtic's defence, you need real intuition. And they never had it. Rangers never had There's it. There's a real physical strength about Celtic as well, isn't there? Which Rangers really couldn't match today. I mean, they're a big, strong, powerful side. Now you take um, Baldy at the back five, and what happens? They bring in Varga. He's every bit as tall. Yes, that's true. And Sutton goes back there, yeah. and he's a big one. Yeah. So if you're going to get in a motion, you've got to get into your feet. But Lennon puts a nice shield on front of the back too. They can't get in. Jackie comes in. Jackie McNamara comes in, helps him out one side. And Coming forward, numbing a hit that is so easy to defend against is untrue. And then again, you know, men behind the ball, but what they do is they close down so quickly. They're charging in, making sure that the Rangers haven't got the time and space. And look at the men, so they're right in the 80-yard line, so easy to defend there. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not just the men behind the ball, it's the pressure then on the man on the ball. You know, once the first green and white jersey goes, the second goes, and in the end, I mean, that's, that's, that's great to sort of, yeah. if you're a central defender, oh. playing behind that, it's fantastic. Because it's on your go, fellas, close yeah. the ball down. And you, you, you never, Gary, you never ever get pulled out of position. And then ever. you go the outlet. Whereas this, you watch this when it's played up to Larson here. This was the difference in the two sides. It's played into Larson's feet here. Where's the pressing? They've got, look at the range. I mean, yeah. he's, he's amongst four, five, six of them. And there's no pressure on the ball whatsoever. Well, that's the difference. I mean, we. Well, Amazing we're... performance when you consider it's a makeshift defence. So to get that organisation and defend your, your 18 yard box. We've said this right before about Neil. He seems to have this Midas touch where he can take sort of limited resources and make them into a team. Get them playing for each other, get them working hard, yeah. get them defending well, and making it very, very difficult for the opposition. The thing, the thing is, as well, he's played yeah. two different formations in the yeah. game as well. So even more power to your elbow, isn't it? If you, if you can change and still be the same. I don't, I don't know if you can hear this, but yeah. isn't he that good? No. Right. Well, let's hear from him. <laughs> there he is with Chick. Martin, goes to the you'll be a happy man. I thought we played very well indeed. We've come here. We've had to defend as we knew we'd, uh, that before the game anyway. And, uh, and we've created uh, the most chances in the match. And I thought that uh, we, we, you know, if we'd taken, Klaus has been magnificent again, absolutely fantastic. And uh, I thought maybe we could have gone a goal in front at half time. It wasn't to be, just scored immediately afterwards. And it's a, it's a long 45 minutes. Having said that, we've still had two, two decent chances again to wrap it up, unfortunately. Weren't able to do it. And uh, so we had to see a long 10 minutes through. Yeah, well, Bald is going to have a trouble getting back into this team if we get Chris Sutton, isn't he? Sutton was immense today, absolutely immense. You know, um, I think he said to us jokingly, if he had known he was going to be playing centre half, could he not have done it? Uh, played yesterday in the five sides at centre half, but he played very well. I mean, he's, there's three positions he's played for us in the space of, uh, of two games, and um, he was immense. So with the side. One goal did it, it wasn't a classic, I think we can have a look at it, Martin. It was a deflection from John Hartson, but you've got to be in there to score them. Yeah, well, um, I think John just has just remarked in the, in, the, uh, in the dressing room just there now that he was hoping to put it to, uh, to repay the favour with, uh, with Henrik, and I think that's what exactly what he was trying to do, was just dink it back in again. And uh, luckily for us, it's got the deflection. As he said, the way Klaus has played against us in, uh, in matches, it would have needed a deflection to, to go past him. This doesn't win the championship, but it's, it's a huge step in the right direction, psychological for you. No, it doesn't win the championship at all, absolutely not. Uh, I mean, we took more points of Rangers last season and end up losing it on, uh, on the goal. So uh, it's, it's, a, um, it's a, a boost for us anyway, and uh, what, miles to go. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. Final thoughts, very briefly, on how... Well, I don't think it was things. a classic. Obviously, the games we, we witnessed last season were better, but there was always some, something for, to, for us to talk about. I think that Celtic and the tactics on Neil mm. were spot on, and looking at the two sides, you'd, you'd have to say that Celtic looked the better bet to win the Championship. I think coming on the back of Tuesday night's home win against Lyon as well in the Champions League, it's been a great couple yeah. of games for Celtic. OK, gents, thanks very much for your time. That's it from us here at Ibrox. First blood to Celtic. Goodbye. <laughs>